Hey, Fred Minnick here, and the other day, I'm standing in the checkout line of a, of a liquor store, and I'm looking around at the new bottles on the shelf, and I had an epiphany. Things are changing in American whiskey because they can't get the barrels they want. So instead of like bottling a shit turd uh, straight bourbon, they're getting a barrel here, a barrel there, a barrel here, barrel here, barrel everywhere, and a barrel there. Give, give me a barrel there. Give me who? Give me a barrel now. Give me. A, okay, I'm I'm uh, off my meds today. But basically, the blend of straights has completely uh, turned the whiskey world upside down. Now, Barrel really made this popular with their blend of straights. So what they would do is they basically would start uh, taking stocks from Tennessee and from Kentucky and blending them together to create one. Then you have like a brand like Jim Beam, which comes out with a little book, which had uh, corn whiskey, Canadian whiskey, Kentucky bourbon in it. And now you have people like my boys, Kenny and Ryan with the Pursuit series that are blending stuff from all over the place. And the fact is you can really make a whiskey better by getting a barrel that's kind of average and another barrel that's kind of average and another barrel that's kind of average and one that's below average. You put those four pieces together and you're like, holy shit, this is a really good whiskey. And this term, blend of straights, you'll see them, you'll see them a lot of times on the back of the label. Sometimes it's on the front, but it's a category that basically means they're combining you know, straight whiskey uh, from various places. Now, why do some people uh, have a little bit of a problem with it? Because they do. You know, when you see a blend of straights, it's technically not a bourbon. It is a blend of straight bourbon, which is a different category. See, they are allowed to add things to it. In fact, I'm posting the actual definition to it right here and highlighting a few of those things. And what that means is, is that while someone like Barrel Bourbon and Pursuit Series, uh, they're all above board, you know, they're not adding anything, they're not adding any flavoring, they're not adding any coloring. But for every one of those, there's five brands that are like, well, we can, this color here is a little light, so let's, uh, let's add some caramel coloring here. Or you have someone who has a um, blend of straights finished in uh, some kind of barrel, you know, let's say it's a port barrel and they get the blend of straights vat and then they have the uh, the port barrel and they say, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and just pour a little bit of this here port in there with that barrel. So you got a little bit of flavoring going on. So while the blend of straights is not exactly the, the Wild West, uh, there are a lot of really incredible flavors popping. And I'm a big fan of the category. I do respect those who uh, kind of follow more of the straight, you know, the traditional styles of a straight bourbon or straight whiskey style and that they don't add anything to it. Uh, and those people will rise to the top while those who are kind of, um, you know, finding ways to add coloring and flavor to it. I think, you know, I don't think those are going to hit the mark. But what this is allowing people to do, it's allowing small distillers to um, soften the approach of their whiskey. So if you've got a, a, a new distillery and you have some two-year-old bourbon, you know, you put that two-year-old bourbon out by itself, you're gonna get killed. I mean, you're gonna have some loyalists, some f fans and so forth, and that's gonna be exciting. They're gonna support you, but you know, for the most part, people aren't gonna like two-year-old uh, bourbon. It's just too young. And, but if you get that two-year-old bourbon and blend it in with, say, some six-year MGP or four-year Kentucky bourbon, while the price point may go up, that whiskey's a lot better. And so this category is something that we have not seen really uh, develop in the past. Uh, in fact, blending was such a dirty word in American whiskey because of the 1800s uh, Canadian blenders and the price, the price cutting, 1930s uh, blend of, blended whiskeys. You know, American distillers would do everything that they could to not even use the word blend in their in their just normal nomenclature. So that's why when you go to a distillery and you hear an old school distiller say, we're marrying barrels, we're mingling barrels, they will use every single term that they can 
for the actual process of blending. But today, I think the most important room, or the most important person at a distillery is probably the blender right now. Because you cannot, uh, you cannot, that's more art than science. Like you can teach science, and while it is hard uh, to achieve that master distiller level, like the legit master distiller level, you know, it can be taught and, and learned over time. But blending, uh, I, I think that's a gift. You can learn a little bit uh, of the way, but you either have it or you don't. It's art. The art of blending is very real. Uh, and the best blending house out there, in my opinion right now, is Barrel. They do such a great job. But that's going to do it for what I think is this great uh, new trend in American whiskey. There's got a, it's got a little bumps in the road like everything else. But uh, if you have a blend of straights that you really like, maybe it's from High West, uh, maybe it's from a New York distillery or somewhere in Missouri, put it in the comment section. I would love to know what your favorite blend of straights is. Or you can go to my Ask God Awards and take a look at all the past blend of straight award winners. But that's gonna do it for this here episode. If you'd be so kind, click the subscribe button, hit like, and uh, help me on this mission to educate people in bourbon. Cheers, everybody. Oh, vodka sucks. But coffee does not.